Hey kids, time for another video. This is lesson 18 in module five, and we're going to be drawing the figures that are in these boxes, the descriptions here. We're working on rhombuses and rectangles today. Previous videos have parallelograms and trapezoids, and so it's these attributes that we really have to follow these directions. We're gonna learn about these figures. The objective for today, always uh, on the bottom of the page, you can look at it. Lesson 18 is to draw rectangles and rhombuses to clarify their attributes and define rectangles and rhombuses based on those attributes. So you're gonna learn by doing. Let's get started. Now, um, you can use like a set square and all that, but I'm kind of lame when it comes to making the shapes. So I know that I have parallel sides with a ruler and since I don't need right angles I can kind of tip my ruler at all kinds of angles and um, as you can see from the lines behind it it's not going to have right angles so as long as my lines are long enough which I can extend them a wee bit longer because this side was a little bit short and then I can just tip my ruler. Again, a six inch ruler is really better. This is a 12 inch ruler, so it's kind of in the way of everything. And then just go on one side or the other. And there you have a rhombus because my ruler is a standard width. Okay, so I can kind of clean up. You can clean up your corners. We may have to extend those later when we are calculating uh, with our protractors what the angles are. But for now, this is my rhombus with four right angles. And let's use our um, centimeter side to measure. Okay, so put that right at the zero. And it's not really relevant what the measurement is. It can be anything that, that you created. And so I'm gonna use millimeters to be precise. It's about 33 millimeters. Okay, you could do 3.3 centimeters. That is equivalent. Yep, and that's 33. And that's 33. And that's 33. So we have a rhombus here because all the sides are 33 millimeters. You can also put, oops, millimeters is equal to 3 and 3 tenths centimeters. Okay, same measurement. There you go, and there you go, rhombus. Let's move on. Rectangle with not all sides equal. That means don't make a square, okay? So again, I'm gonna use my ruler, and I'm just gonna draw two light lines, and then cross them with your set square. And the, the nice part about the set square is that it will help you get those right angles that you need if you have a set square. If you don't have a set square, again, you can use kind of the end of your ruler to make sure that you have a right angle. But the bottom of the set square would go right on that line, and that way you know you're creating uh, perpendicular lines. Notice that the end of my set square is almost like rounded, so I have a hard time making that super precise corner, so I always move it down just a wee bit. And then I'm gonna turn it over, face it the other way. And again, don't make a square. And I'm gonna go just past that line and close it off. So that by the time it curves, I'm already around the corner. Okay, so rectangle with not all sides equal. I know I made right angles. <clears throat> and if this one's right, this one has to be right. And if this one's right, this one has to be right because adjacent angles have to add up to 180 degrees. Let's make another one, a rhombus with one right angle. Now remember on the previous video when we were talking about making at least um, two right angles or at least for the other one, if it has at least one right angle, okay? You can't just get one right angle. You have to have two because the way that perpendicular line crosses the parallel lines, it will cross both lines at the same angle. 
So a rhombus with one right angle is going to be a square. So you can, again, take your ruler. And this time I have to be very precise about the length. So I'm going to make the lines. I'm going to go from 2 to 6. Okay, and then I'm going to go just underneath it about the same length. Now, whatever this length is that I decide, I'm going to mark off. Okay, and I'm going to have a one, two, three centimeter square. So I'm going to put a point here and a point here because that is now my exact, my exact measurement. And again, with the right angle, sorry bulk of my book is in the way probably is in your way as well we all have the same problems okay so I'm going to move this up and I want to make sure that this is it's exactly three centimeters okay and then I'm going to close off that line there and then switch it around and close off this line here now it is important to be precise, as precise as you can be, because we're going to be doing some other things with these figures. So three, and three, and three, and three. So do be careful. Kind of fiddle around with it until you can make sure that it is precise. Clean up the corners. Now, I made a rhombus because it has four sides the same length, just like this one. But we had to have at least one right angle. But again, with the parallel lines, it's going to cross at the same uh, the the same angle. It's going to be perpendicular. And it's going to be 90 degrees here, and it will be 90 degrees here, same degrees. I think that was the word I was searching for. It must be late and after school. Okay, so that is your rhombus with one right angle, and it will actually be a rhombus with four right angles. You just can't help yourself. Okay, rectangle with all sides equal. Hmm, well, instead of making three centimeters, let's try for four. Now, this is going to be challenging because I need to not go on the other side of my ruler. So I'm going to make a four centimeter line. Now I have to go down about a centimeter farther than before. So putting your measuring line on the line that you created, okay, I'm going to go down four centimeters. But I need to make sure that this is a right angle. So take your set square or the corner of paper and just shove it right in the corner. You want to make sure it's precise. Seems okay. So again, I need a four centimeter line. If you want to go from four to eight and kind of eyeball it, I don't know if that's exactly right, but I can tell right now when I go from one to five that that does seem to match up. And so I'm going to close this off. And I know that this is four centimeters. Okay, five minus one is four. And I know that this is four. Ooh, it's like 3.9, so I'm a little bit off there. Okay. All right. Yep, that's yep, that's about a 3.9. So it's actually a wee bit short here. Just because precision. I'm gonna go down one more millimeter and make a different line. And then we'll close that off. So yeah, be precise, as careful as you can. I know it's kind of a hassle, but just do it. You won't regret it. And then these are four centimeters. And then when we continue with the other work, you'll see, oh, that's why. Okay, so use the figures you drew to complete the tasks below. First of all, measure the angles of the figure with your protractor and record the measurements on the figures. Now, we know that these are all 90, so there's really not much measuring that you're going to be doing except on the first rhombus with no right angles. So in the same way that we did before, you can extend these uh, rays or the lines of your figure out a little bit to help you measure. Notice that I just lay it right up there against my um, protractor and my pencil. This one has to go out a little further. 
And same with this one. Now, if you do that, that should get you pretty close to being able to measure all these angles. Okay, so first of all, let's start with this angle right here, this obtuse angle. Let's find out what it is. So again, pencil in the dot, line on your line exactly. You're starting from zero, but you go all the way past 90. And when I, I can use the outer numbers, because I know it's going to be 110, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's about 114, but just double check. And you can look on the inside, because it's going to be the same little tick mark on the inside as it is on the outside. If this, these are closer together, you may have noticed, and these are farther apart. So that's 114. Now something you should notice about a regular rhombus is that if this side was 114, then the other side should be 114. And so lo and behold, if it's on the zero, we go all the way out past 110, 11, 12, 13, look at that, right on the money, right on that fourth one, 70, one, two, three, four, not using the 70, because out beyond that, 110, 11, 12, 13, 14. 114. Okay, hooray. So we did a good job there measuring and making it <coughs> symmetrical. Now I need to have this angle. And you know because of the work that we did before that 180 degrees is what we need to have for these two. So what I'm looking for is the difference between these two, and that's what that needs to be. So mathematically, let's solve that. Zero cannot take four away, so we go next door, take one, and give 10. And I should be looking for about 66 degrees here. Let's check it out. Okay, so put this right on the vertex point. Put your line on your zero. And this is going to be right out here to about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 66. If you can't see it, let me extend it so that you can see it. I kind of went the wrong way on that one. It's okay. We will get there. Okay, vertex point on the zero, extending it out, and blamola, 65, 66. There you go. And so this one I'm assuming is 66 as well, but I will certainly check it. Okay, I'm going to use the left side of my uh, protractor, put that on the vertex point, and again, okay, out on the zero, and we go from here to here and up, and it's, again, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 66, look, one past that, 66. So, hooray, all of our angles add up appropriately. 114 plus 66, 6 of 4 is 10, 6, 7, 8, and that makes my 180 degrees. So that's for a pair of angles. So at the bottom when it says measure the angles of the figures with your protractor and record the measurements on the figures, and we did that, Use a marker or crayon to circle pairs of angles inside each figure with a sum, add it equal to 180, use a different color for each pair. So today we're going to use blue, and we have 114 and 66, and green, 114 and 66. Notice that I could have 66 and 114 here, and 66 and 114 here. When you have a regular uh, shaped polygon that's like got four of the um, same length sides, I could have matching um, adjacent angles. So 66, 14 would also work here. Okay. And it would also work here. So we have lots of great pairings to make the straight angle or the sum of the two adjacent angles equal 180. All right, moving right along. Okay, turn to the back. And now we have another task, draw a rhombus and a rectangle below. Now this is always kind of a challenge, um, students don't always 
like have the skill to make these very precise. <laughs> so don't beat yourself up. Uh, that's my advice to you. I'm just going to get my little set square and I'm going to try to do a rhombus that is not, um, I'm going to make one like I did on the other side, that it's uh, go from here to here and here to here and it's not going to be a square. I have to get from the top to the top and the bottom to the bottom and it just barely fit. Okay, <clears throat> actually I'll probably have to extend those anyway. There's my rhombus and then, um, sorry, and a rectangle. So again, I'm gonna use my ruler, my handy dandy tool here that is so nice and wide. Don't move it, just put two long lines. And then just cross them in such a manner as uh, as you can so that they will create these right angles. You can use your set square to do that. That's probably better. I've just done this for so long. I usually get pretty darn close and that is good. Very good there. <coughs> Sorry, I need coffee. Okay. Okay. Sip of coffee. Did you know that coffee is magic? Alrighty, we drew a rhombus and a rectangle. Now we're going to draw diagonals and measure their lengths. Now the diagonals, which you should know from the video where I gave you all the directions um, and the examples and the pictures. Okay, the diagonals are the lines that go all the way across the center, like the crisscross across the middle from corner to corner. So now that we have drawn those, our task here is to really pay attention to the diagonals. Okay, and then this one is a little bit farther for us to cross. Try to be precise, as precise as you can. There you go. Okay, now we have our diagonals. Now this one looks a little different than this one. So we're going to measure their lengths and record the measurements on the figure. Now when they say record their lengths, uh, there was one video where um, I, I put it on the inside and then I found out later, oh, we have to move it to the outside. So I'm gonna put the total length on the outside I'm gonna call this five centimeters. And then this one, notice I'm always starting from one because the corner of mine is a little curvy. So I always kind of take one off. Sorry, I did not take one off. I forgot to take one off. It's four centimeters. I will take one off as I do this, this time. Okay, and it's not six because I'm not starting I'm there. I'm starting at one, so it's only five. So if I started at one, you'd see that it's five. Okay, so this one, yep, they have shorter amounts because when you squish that rhombus in, this actually has a shorter distance to go than this long one, okay? But this one, we're going to measure the diagonals. And so if I go from one to, oh, that'd be about six and a half because it's about seven and a half. See, if I go to the end, it's about six and a half, 6.5 centimeters. Now, what do you expect this one to be? Hmm. Yes, I expect it to be the same too because it's a regular shape. It's got four right angles, so they are both the same. Now these two diagonals are um, different lengths, but these two diagonals are the same length. So you should be discovering all this stuff as we continue to move forward. Did it, did it, did it. Measure the length of each segment of the diagonals only from the vertex to the intersection point 
of the diagonals. Using, using a marker or crayon color, the segments that have the same length. Well, we know that these are going to be the same because the whole length is the same. So as you measure from corner to center, okay, then what I'm looking for is about the halfway point. And sure enough, it's about 3.25. So if we label that here, and here, then you can see that those two are matching. As would be these two, again, just try to press down the book, and 3.25, because it's right between the 3 and the 3.5, and the same thing over here, about 3.25. Oops, I'm over the line. There we go. Yep, same thing. Boy, this is a good, precise drawing, you might be saying. You might be saying, oh, heaven help me. This is not a good drawing. <laughs> Just keep trying. Okay, draw rhombus and rectangle. Now we have to measure these. And from here to here, I'm getting right on that line, two and a half, 2.5 centimeters, which makes sense because this whole thing is five. And yep, yippers, 2.5 for those two. And then across the, the shorter middle, it's right exactly at the two. So this is two centimeters and two centimeters. Now color them the same if they match. This matches this, and this one matches this one. But notice that this matches this as well as this one and this one. So they're all the same on this piece. Okay, so you should notice that, that on a rhombus, if it doesn't have right angles, that I have this sort of longer, shorter diagonal. Okay, now use a different color. So we did that. Now we're done with B. Now list the properties that are shared by this. One other thing that we haven't really talked about is the way that these are crossing. You may, I don't know, maybe at home you're like, hmm, that looks like a pretty interesting angle that you just created there in the center of your rhombus, okay? But it's not the same as this one here. Notice that this is an obtuse angle and this is an acute angle right here. So. Even though the diagonals bisect each other exactly in the middle of the rectangle and they don't bisect each other exactly in the middle of the rhombus, what you do have is a pair of perpendicular lines that have been created here in the rhombus. And so that's just another property that all of the rhombuses have that we work with. So let's just finish this up by listing the properties that we have learned today. Boy, so many tools. All right, so the rhombuses we worked with today, four equal sides. Opposite sides are parallel. Remember, this is parallel to this. That's how I use my ruler. Okay, and this is just the rhombuses, not the rectangle. Don't think about the rectangle. Uh, the diagonals are what are called perpendicular, perpendicular bisectors. Bi, no, no, B I S S, -S E C T O R S, bisectors. Perpendicular bisectors. Cutting exactly in half means the bisect, but perpendicular means creating that 90 degree angle. And these adjacent angles, A-D-J-A-C-E-N-T-A-N-G, 
LES, not ELS, angles add up to 180. Okay, so these are some very important properties that uh, rhombuses will have, so that these are all ways that you can check them. How about the rectangles that you worked with today? Well, they have, uh, they have to have four straight sides, of course. So it's like a quadrilateral um, with opposite sides being parallel and equal with opposite sides that are parallel and equal in length, okay, equal to each other. Well, actually, opposite sides that are parallel and equal. So the long sides can be equal to each other, but the short sides can be equal to each other. They don't all have to be the same. That's a different way to say it, okay? Four equal sides is different than opposite sides are equal, okay? Just know that. Um, two pairs of parallel sides. Two pairs. Remember, pairs are like shoes. You have to have two of them. Two pairs of parallel sides. Sided sides. S-I-D-E-S. And the diagonals. That's a D. Are equal. Okay, so they're equal in length, both were 6.5, and they bisect each other. Okay, exactly. They bisect each other exactly. So unlike the rhombus, which they don't have equal bisectors. Be sure and click subscribe and come back again. I will always try to give you some good information here. When can a trapezoid also be called a rhombus? Okay, it has to have... Four equal sides because the trapezoid would have one pair of parallel sides but it has to have two pairs of parallel sides and then when can a parallelogram also be called a rectangle this is in order to go from here to here you must have four right angles Okay, those are 90 degrees. Must have. And when can a quadrilateral also be called a rhombus? Okay, if I have a quadrilateral and it's going to be called a rhombus, it's going to have uh, four equal sides. Oops. And two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so I think that covers it all. Quadrilateral, four sides, rhombus, four equal sides, two pairs of parallel sides. Yep, I think that does it. So great, I hope this is super helpful, and I will see you on the next video. Bye now.